Hey guys, so it is time for my top 10 favorite movies of 2016. And I'm a firm believer in sweet before sour. So tonight we're getting top 10 and tomorrow we're getting bottom 10, which is probably the more fun list. So wait for that tomorrow. But first off, I have some honorable mentions and this is my list. Uh, okay, okay, honorable mentions, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I, Daniel Blake, The Jungle Book, Hella High Water, Ten Cloverfield Lane, Doctor Strange, A Date from Mad Mary, Finding Dory, Don't Breathe, and The United Kingdom. That is a lot of honorable mentions, but it's been a, it's been a good year for movies, for the most part. And okay, okay, number 10, we have Kubo and the Two Strings. The best animated film I've seen all year. It's awesome. I love the mythology behind it. It's beautifully animated. You know, it's like a stop motion animation. They do some incredibly inventive things in this movie. The voice cast is amazing. We've got Art Parkinson from Game of Thrones, Charlie Theron, Matthew McConaughey, Ray Fiennes. Hey, there's even George Takei in that movie. For a little bit and George Takai is always a good thing. Uh, so yeah and it's just an incredibly fun adventure. It's great for kids, it's great for adults, it's mature. You know like I think adults will find more in this than kids will even. It's almost anime levels of mature storytelling and it's just it's a really great movie and I think you should all watch it. It's my number 10 Kubo and the Two Strings. Number 9 if that would be Eye in the Sky, uh, the new f uh, film by Gavin Hood. And it's a really cool and interesting modern war film, which basically it's set in war in like ugh, war rooms. And it's about drone warfare. And it's a really interesting moral dilemma that runs throughout the film. And there's some great performances by the likes of Helen Mirren and Aaron Paul and Barkat Abdi, plus it's the last live action role for one of my favorite actors of all time, Alan Rickman, and he is lovely in that film. He is great. I recommend it. It's my number nine. I love Eye in the Sky. Number eight, Nocturnal Animals. This is a dark movie. This is probably the darkest movie on the list. And I just love the, the sort of tree story, the, um, the fact that it's three stories within one story, I find that really interesting. Probably the best cinematography I've seen all year. Uh, our own boy, uh, Seamus McGarvey. Uh, and I just, I love the performances. It felt like a cross between David Lynch and Tarantino. And that's just an, such an interesting mesh of directorial styles. That, like, I, just, I, I really like the movie. Uh, number seven, Southside with You. Not a lot of people saw this, but it was a really, su really sweet, tender romance, romantic film, but that documents the first date of Barack and Michelle Obama back in 1989. But what I love about the film is, it it's not beaten over the head. It doesn't beat her over the head with, you know saying oh look it's the first lady and the president's first date no the thing is with the movie it could, they could have been anyone it doesn't it didn't even need to be the obamas this could have been two random you know fictional made-up characters in this movie but i would have still loved it because the the script is great the chemistry between um parker sawyer and tika sumter who play barack and michelle is phenomenal so it's just a really sweet movie and it was probably one of the biggest surprises of the year because i did not see this movie coming and it doesn't get political it doesn't really get political you know it's just a very honest and touching romance and i just really liked it number six the edge of 17 anyone who's who's been reading my reviews knows that i've been gushing about the edge of 17 for weeks now it's such, it feels like a modern John Hughes film. You know, I didn't think you could actually make a John Hughes movie in modern day, but 
Uh, the Edge of Seventeen is just that. It feels like a movie that John Hughes would make if he was still alive. You know, it gets being a teenager. It understands the trials and turbulations, but it doesn't make it cliche or corny. Like half the fi- half the coming of age sort of teenage films from this decade or this generation will probably feel dated by the next generation. But this, I feel, will stand the test of time. Like the movies of John Hughes and American Pie, maybe the first three, and Mean Girls, those type of films. I think it will stand the test of time along with those. It's the best teen coming of age film, American teen coming of age films that I've seen in a really long time. Plus, Woody Harrelson's character reminds me of a certain uh, teacher that I had. Anyone who went to school with me who subscribed to this channel. If you see the movie, you might know which teacher I'm talking about. And if you don't, you might want to just ask. I, I won't say it here because who knows what, who might be watching this. But so, yeah, I, I just I really related to this film and I loved it. It was one of, it might have been the biggest surprise because I didn't see this movie coming. Like I didn't know about it until about a month before it came out. So, yeah, I love movies that surprise me like that. It's why I go to the movies. Okay, top five. This is it. This is the big, like the top five. Any of these films could have been my number one for the year. I love them all. But I had to pick a number one and I had to pick a number two and a number three and a number five. So this is what I chose. On number five, Captain America Civil War. The best superhero film of the year by a mile. The Russo brothers know how to make a Captain America film and they do such a good job here. I am so happy that they have the reins of the MCU sorry, going through to Infinity War because they're able to take a movie that has almost all of the MCU characters, so many characters. The cast list in this movie is ginormous and they don't they make sure it's not a clusterfuck. Like so many superheroes in this movie. But they all feel like they have a role. They all feel like they have a purpose. It's not it's not a clusterfuck. And it could have been a clusterfuck. And that airport scene. Wow. And Black Panther. Wow. And the introduction of Spider-Man. Wow. Like this movie got so many things right. And the ending to the film felt so personal. Like the finale action scene happened halfway through the movie. And then by the time the actual finale comes, it doesn't feel like a big blockbuster wham bam superhero ending with a giant fucking space beam in the sky. It just felt like a personal back alley fight, like some scrap you see outside coppers where the two guys just do not like each other. Just... It felt, it felt like such a personal movie and it never felt like a third Avengers movie. It always felt like a Captain America movie. It didn't feel like an Avengers movie even though it was kind of Avengers 2.5 in a way. And I just, I, lo- I really liked it. It might be one of the best superhero films ever made in my own personal opinion. But this is my number five. Number four... That would be Rogue One, the most recent addition to this list. How was I not going to put a Star Wars movie on my top 10 list? This just happened to be the darkest, the grittiest, and probably one of the most satisfying movies to be a Star Wars fan watching. This movie has just amazing fan service. You know, maybe the best Darth Vader scene we've seen. This side of the Luke, I am your father scene. You know the scene I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And yeah, it's just like, it's such a fun movie. It's one of the best experiences I've had in a cinema in a very long time. And I will buy it when it's on Blu-ray and I will watch it multiple times. It's just an awesome movie and it's my number four. Number three, The Nice Guys. I love the nice guys. Like I, this is the movie. This is the movie on the list most of all outside of the, outside of Civil War and Rogue One that I actually that I do want a sequel to. I want more of 
Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe's characters. I want more of Shane Black's incredible writing. This is the best film Shane Black's ever made. No doubt about it. This is the best film he's written since The First Little Weapon. This reminded me of The First Little Weapon. It's the funniest movie of the film. It's the funniest movie I've seen all year. Definitely. And the chemistry between Gosling and Crowe is outstanding. And Ryan Gosling proves he has such great comedic timing. He reminded me of Buster Keaton at times. Like, he's so good. Like, is there anything Ryan Gosling can't do? Like, that's what I was thinking when I left this movie. And also, it's awesome. That's what I was also thinking. Uh, so that's my number three. Number one and number two... I, just, I flip between those these so many times while trying to make this list, but honestly, I'm just going with my heart here. And my number two is Arrival. Arrival is maybe the best science fiction film of this decade. Just I'm laying the gauntlet now. It's so good. It is the thinking man's Independence Day. It's not a blockbuster. It's a it's an emotional intellectual film you know and it's it's such a brilliant message about communication and how that can be used to bring people together you know it's a movie about words trumping war and you don't need violence to solve your problems you need to communicate and in this day and age you know this came out the week that trump won the election and i just think how there's not a film this year that came out at a more appropriate time with a more appropriate message and I think that is one of the most beautiful things about cinema is a movie can touch on social issues emotional issues at the right time in the right place at the right moment when society needs it most whether it be deliberate or just out of blind fucking luck but I just love that about this film. And uh, you also have uh, brilliant performances by Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker. It's just, I love this movie. It's so different. And Denis, Vill Denis Villeneuve is maybe the best director working today. You know, Prisoner, Sicario, Arrival. This is his best film. I can't wait to see what he does with Blade Runner. Arrival. Everyone just please watch it. Give it a try. I'm begging you, and it's my number two, which means it has to be a hell of a film to not make it to number, not have that be number one. And my number one is the film that's been my number one since Paddy's Day, and that is Sing Street. No film this year touched me on an emotional, on a physical level. I felt like the film was trying to put its hand out through the cinema screen and just grab me and shake me in a good way like oh sing street i just i love this movie you know it's heartfelt the soundtrack is brilliant i love the characters it it just it bring it makes me feel good every time i watch it there's not i've thought about it more than any other film this year it's it, it is it inspires me whenever i watch it like Maybe it's because like, I want to be a film director someday and just the whole story of, you know, a kid my age just, you know, finding passion and finding a girl. And it's just, it's, it's such a perfect coming of age film. And it just hit me on an emotional level that even Arrival or The Nice Guys or any Marvel or Star Wars movie just couldn't. And for that, it's my number one. It's, it's such a good film. And it's my number one. So thanks everyone. That's been my uh, top 10. It's just my opinion. Like if you don't like it. Good for you. If you don't agree with it. And if you have your own top 10. Then good for you. Put it in the comments below. And subscribe. And keep watching my videos. Because I love doing these videos. I wish more people would watch them. But maybe they will now. Uh, and again tomorrow. The fun list. The top 10 worst films of 2016. I cannot wait. I'll see you then.